Ano ba? 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 Ano So, naka-desktop ka, hindi ka naman naka-laptop. Kasi desktop audio lang sa iyo. Saan? Hindi, nasa mga nasa laptop. Sa laptop? Yan, sa iyo. Yung isang house. Ay, ito madali. Hindi yung ano. Nag-practice din na ako. Talaga. Baka ano sila. Tara. Klasik ka? Klasik ka? Klasik ako eh. Ay, ito na. May balance din. Kita na lang tayo din. Baka makita tayo din. Anong pwede sa'yo na mag-piging? Hindi ko ba nga ba? Mawin ako ba sa akin eh? Bata konti na ka classic pag may ito. Meron na. Meron na. Meron na. Hello.
what are the causes and the means and the effects and also the ends. So I was able to come up with the log frame, the logic model, the logical uh, framework for the MSC Culture and Arts Unit. So I was able to uh, call the impact in the community as we build our collections and our long-term goal is to produce and create the cultural hub. So how we will know that uh, we are uh, going to that direction by uh, indicating the objectively verifiable indicators. That's why we need people like uh, Bucal Primo and Concial Casey for the legislative measures. And the means of verification is in the form of the number of resolutions or ordinances passed. And we would be able to have a good indicator if we have more partnerships and collaborations, which would be uh, validated by the number of memorandum of understanding or memorandum of agreement or letters of preference between agencies, private or uh, public. And also, uh, we'd be happy if we would be able to get grants some revenue and come up with our own foundation and uh, we'll be able to add value to what we already have, what we have uh, discovered in the cultural mapping process. So the outcomes that uh, we are looking for is uh, talent development. So as we develop the talent of our members in MCCA or the MSC Kalinangan at Sining, uh, we hope also to develop our audience. That's why we produce some performances and mounted some production and we produce some publications so we can develop our audience reach. So by coming up with projects, programs, and activities, in celebration of Arts Month, Literature and Filipino Food Month, and also uh, Heritage Month, through online virtual digital training seminars, workshops, we'd be able to get the review, feedback, and post-mortem results. And this would not be possible if we won't be able to have an organization and uh, content in the internet and also news reports with our brass band, our theater guild, uh, the Literary Club. So we publish it uh, with our friends from Marine Buke News, our colleagues in panitikan.ph and also in our website with the help of ICTSC. 
So the condition report, the inventory, the news articles, and the accomplishment report is the basis or means of uh, verification. And finally, I'd like to end with our input and activities that uh, what we need is uh, a community, uh, members, and uh, in the process, we need to have trainings and workshop and echo, se echo sessions after the training and the workshop. So we will be able to do this by having indicators like promotional materials, social media, that's why we are making use of the Facebook community page and our very own YouTube channel, which is MSCC TV. And uh, we make use of the Zoom platform and the Google uh, Meet. So with the help of our uh, means of verification through Google Forms, social media posts, and certificates. So I think that would be all. I hope that the uh, year 2021 would uh, be productive and creative because 2021 is the international year of creative economies for sustainable development and global recovery. So again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, tomo arigato, minasan. Uh, gambate to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Noblesa, for that enlightening, informative, and very organized message. At this juncture, we will now move on the presentation of cultural mapping forms. To start, may I call on Ms. Michelle Monsanto from Group 1 to present to us the natural heritage. Okay. Ini ini Good morning po sa lahat. I am Michelle B. Monsanto from Balanacan Elementary School, Mugkog. Uh, my topic is all about natural heritage plants. The plants is a uh, buri or buli, buli or buri plant in English. Scientific name Coripa elata rub. It is a tree, and then it is native from Torrijos, and then habitats mountainous. Came from Barangay Pascasan, Torrijos, Marinduque. It is found or busy in some barangays. Not all barangay in Torrijos have. The plant buri it is perennial. Okay, the buri for uh, a palm tree has a flower. It flowers one at the end of its lifetime. Pag namulaklak po siya ay isang beses lang po sa isang uh, once in a lifetime lang po siya namulaklak and 
After po siya mamulaklak ay namamatay na din po yung plants. Leaves, the most important parts of the plant because came uh, came from the leaves it the bontai fiber that bontai bontal fiber have many uses it used for building houses fans mats bugs and while the ribs are making for the brooms pwede po siyang gawing walisting ting fruits uh, it can be make a salad or minatamis in uh, Tagalog. And also, uh, it is uh, good for food, starch, or flour. Pag namumunga po yung, ano, ay, yung isang boy farm, ay marami po siyang bunga. Wala po siyang amoy. And then... Also, obod or buds of the boy farm can be eaten raw in salad or in cook. Uh, according to the person that I interviewed during that time, she said that ubud ay, ay yung ubud po ay pwede po siya uh, ginagamit po siya pag nagakasalan po. Isa po siya dun sa mga niluluto pag may kasal. Okay. The buri palms also make for, uh, pwede po siyang gawing tuba or inumin. And then the fresh sweet sap is great source for beverage and also pwede po siyang gawing suka pag na-permit po. Common uses, edible. Okay, the buds, then the fruits. And then sometimes it can be drink or beverage. Another is it's an ornamental. The yung to yung ano po ay yung to yung buto or seeds po nung buri farm can be make as rosary beads or button or make as handicrafts in that barangay. Okay, handicrafts such as cloth. Cloth, cloths, hats, place mats, mats, rugs, basket, bags, hats. These are the products that came from Bontal Fiber that the barangay there, they, uh, the barangay in Bunlio, there are, uh, mayroon po isang doon nagahabi, then they, the girl that I we interviewed there, they said that, the finished product from the Bontal Fiber ay nadala po nila in other country. Then, can we make a shoes, broomstick, and then, aside from that, pwede po siyang gawing pantali po sa mga bangka ng mga mangingisda. Also as, Firewoods and wood frames for nita na nito hat. Also, they can make this for impong ano ay pag naga sample po yung patubig po sa tubigan. Okay, and then for medicine, yung dahon po niya in other country they use this for medicinal purposes and also here in our Country, they use us straight for different illnesses. Buri palm tree have different uses from its trunk to its leaves. Uh, buri palm tree is the uh, second from coconut para po dun sa pinakamaraming nagagamit. Okay. Scope and uses. The finished product of Buntal fibers are in demand in both local and interna international market according to Mrs. Leonita Jimena in Bunleo Torrijos Marinduque. The hat they are weaving are being exported to China, aside from China in other countries as well as. Uh, a native from the place 
told me that Burit tree would flower only once in its very long lifespan and it meant it was going to die soon. Yun nga ni po, uh, as I mentioned a while ago, that the Burit palm tree, pag namulaklak po siya, pagkatapos po niyang mamulaklak, ay pwede na po siyang mamatay. Okay. I would like to be a Burit tree, not fancy or simply ornamental, but useful and giving much of itself for years and years, holding itself up, up with great dignity and beauty till the very end. But during what normally should be in fading away of life, it flowers in great beauty, not only to say goodbye, but also to give a new life. It came from Anonymous. Significant. Buri is one of the most important palms in terms of economic and industrial importance. The leaf is the most versatile material in handicraft industry. It can be easily dyed and into many shapes. Women weigh buri to augment family income and gives us lively to the livelihood to the barangay. It is environmentally friendly because products all over the country. According to the study of Godofredo Hughes Stewart Jr. or Stewart Exchange, the leaf of the Riffan tree have antimicrobial ma, microbial activity, phytochemicals and antibacterial minimum concentration, gibang palm trunks as enrichment culture medium for bacteria. Material growth study evaluated the effectiveness of gibang palm trunk as an enrichment culture medium using E. coli and S. saurus. Results show the powderized trunk palm tree is capable for growing both E. coli and S. Are the potential as enrichment medium for microbiological study and Pietanol, anti-cancer seeds. Okay. According to Stowart Exchange, this species is widespread and not under any threat. Okay. Wala po siya, hindi po siya, ano, ay, hindi po siya endangered at saka valuable. According to Rizalina Reforma, the person in the barangay Pakaskas, Santorijos, each one of them take care of the very farm and their very farm plantation or backyard. Came for months, Rosalina I. Reforma, 61 years old, residence of Barangay Pakaskasan and Godofredo U. Stowart Jr. and D. Stowart Exchange. It's from Google. Hello po. Now, we will hear more about the built heritage from Group 2 to be presented by Ms. Ajoy Agiflor. Good morning, everyone. So this presentation is all about uh, the tangible, immovable heritage. So our group selected the the Buak Hotel. So the Buak Hotel is under
is under the category government structures, private built structures, and commercial establishments. So in this uh, form, it covers the background information of the structure, description, stories associated with the structure, significance, conservation, and significant tangible movable heritage within the premises of the structure. So in these three photos, it shows the past to current exterior appearance of the Buak Hotel throughout the years. These are the hotel rooms offered by the Buak Hotel in this uh, time. For the background information, the type of this structure is hotel. The ownership is private and is, it is located at the corner of the Gracias Street and the Pomoceno Street, San Miguel, Boac, Marinduque. The total land area and the structure area of the hotel is 302.648 square meters. It is constructed in the year 1967 and at this time it is already 54 years old. The ownership of the hotel is from Luisito Reyes who transferred the ownership to Luis, Luisa Rosario Reyes. So Luisito Reyes is the father of Luisa Rosario Reyes. For the description. The physical description of the hotel. The Buwak Hotel is a three-story building fronting the Archbishop Pal Palace of the Diocese of Buwak. The concrete structure of the hotel is well painted with cream and blue colors and is surrounded with some ornamental plants. A label curving the name of the hotel can be found above the entry door to the lobby. On the left side of the hotel is the doorway to the store inside the hotel. And the other doorway is to the Cafe Mamita restaurant of the hotel. Looking up, a balcony of the second and third floor can be seen, and the fire exit ladder is attached to it. Upon entering to the hotel lobby, there is a waiting area wherein guests could comfortably wait or relax. Next to that comfy waiting area, on the right side of the lobby, is the staircase to the second floor. Besides the information desk, is the doorway to the stock room. On the left side of the lobby, opposite the staircase, is the doorway to the store of the hotel. Walking through the information desk to inquire about the hotel, the interior design is not noticeable, show, showcasing the rich culture and tradition of the town. The ambience of the hotel gives the guests an old home and an old time feeling because old materials, artifacts, and pictures are displayed. Taking steps up to the second floor, through the wooden stairs, the entire floor was covered with wooden flooring that was preserved even during the renovation of the hotel. There is a small waiting area for the guests. On the left side is a staircase to the third floor, and on the right side is a hallway towards the hotel rooms. In the hallway, paintings and wooden sculptures are displayed on the wall. Reaching the third floor, through the wooden stairs is a conference room arranged with tables, chairs, sound systems, and other conference materials. Passing through the conference room, there are additional four hotel rooms. Hallway was also decorated with paintings and wooden sculptures.
guests can choose among 12 available rooms in the second floor and four available rooms in the third floor. Every room have a window and a balcony. Room styles include ordinary, standard, suite, deluxe, family deluxe, and family suite. Hotel rooms offers ordinary to deluxe styles with ventilation, bed, toilet, bath and personal care, Wi-Fi, and television as a minimum inclusion, up to maximum inclusion of food, mini refrigerator, coffee table, and chairs, shower, and air conditioner. Landmarks include the streets where the Land Bank of the Philippines Building and Bureau of Internal Revenue Building is located. So how does the Boac Hotel started? So history of the structure. The Boac Hotel, as one of the first built hotels in the province of Marinduque, was inaugurated on December 9, 1967. It was originally made to accommodate the new investors for mining executives because the mining firm started the development of the project that time, and their executives and con constructors needed a place to stay. Also, it was built to cater domestic travelers. It started with the construction of a wooden two-story building for a 10-bedroom accommodation. It is only equipped with an electric fan wherein electric power was supplied by a generator for only a few hours at night. Up to the recent physical appearance of the Boac Hotel, it undergone three renovations. Last two renovations are estimated on the year 2011 and 2016. From the two-story building with a rooftop or an open area, the rooftop was repaired for the third floor of the building, creating a conference hall and additional rooms. Although most of the parts of the structure were altered with concrete materials, the wooden structure of the second floor is sustained. Because of that, its purpose of accommodating local and foreign guests was maintained and added the purpose of accepting different gatherings such as conferences, seminars, and trainings. Additionally, comfort rooms, restrooms of the rooms in the hotel before is in the ratio 1 is to 2. This means that there is only one common comfort room shared for every two rooms. However, there was, this was changed into one is to one ratio due to privacy issues of the guests. Common comfort rooms with other guests. Today, each room has its own comfort room. Aside from that, the hotel is in the corner of Geogracia Street of Barangay San Miguel, where vehicles are turning towards the highway to Buak Town and other towns. It undergone several repairs because heavy vehicles that turned in that corner accidentally hit the corner of the ground floor where the entry door to the lobby is found. Hence, it was renovated from a pointed corner made up of wood to a slightly curved corner made up of concrete materials. There are rooms on the ground floor before as well as in the second floor in which room rates range from 7 pesos to 35 pesos. But as renovated, only the second and third floors are occupied with different rooms today. Room rates range from 800 pesos to 4,100 pesos. Stories associated with the structure. The Buac Hotel, as a foremost hotel when it comes to accommodation, is mostly associated during early Lenten season that the province of Marinduque is flooded with domestic and foreign guests, tourists, travelers who want to witness the well known Moriones Lenten rites. Due to its long years of service, it has been famous to the travelers that if they came to the province, 
they would be checking in for days in the hotel during their stay. Significance of the structure. For the historical significance, the five-decade-old hotel built in 1967 is one of the old, oldest hotels in the municipality of Buac, as well as in the province of Marinduque. The historical mining firm mainly brought the existence of the Buac Hotel. This is to accommodate the new investors for mining executives because the mining firm started the development of the, of the project that time. And their executives and constructors needed a place to stay. Also, the Buac Hotel is, in, is an evidence of how the structures had been adapted to changes in design from the traditional to modern perspectives. Through the years, the structure of the Buac Hotel had witnessed different significant events in the history of the province. The exterior and interior appearance of the Buac Hotel shows beauty and aesthetic significance. So this is for the aesthetic significance. Exterior appearance of the hotel may look like a renovated ancestral house. Upon entry, its interior appearance shows some well-crafted modern design, but mainly showcasing traditional home facilities, furniture, and decors, which gives the feeling of entering an old home in an old time. Decorations feature a collection of some decade-old objects, old paintings, and things. Some displays include the repurposed old materials, like the old sewing machine used as leg of a lampshade, which shows artistic and creativity of the designer. These were maintained even with renovations to preserve the rich culture and tradition of the town and the province. The color of the building changed from various colors. For the economic significance, aside from the taxes paid by the hotel, the Boa Hotel helps in promoting tourism in the province since it is a known hotel. It has also a store inside, the, inside that sells locally made products of the locals of Marinduque, such as Rihanna's Marinduque Deli. And souvenir items such as keychains, Mariana shirts, fun, and many more. Most importantly, through this structure, small businesses had created their own name in the industry, helping the locals of Marinduque to be successful entrepreneurs. Hence, the structure has economic significance. For the social political significance, in terms of social political significance, the Buak Hotel served prominent people in the history, like former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and current President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, who visited the province. This also includes celebra celebrities like Gloria Diaz, the Miss Universe 1969, Drew Arellano, traveling host in GME Network, George Stregan, a Filipino film actor, and many more. Also, since the hotel has conference hall, this serves as a venue for gatherings in which people socialize and get along with each other. Including authorities and politicians of the province. Domestic and foreign guests were able to meet new acquaintances. inside the hotel. Hence, this structure plays a social role of binding people together. For the spiritual significance, since this hotel is fronting the Archbishop Palace of the Diocese of Buak, it has a spiritual significance in terms of the Roman Catholic religion. Historically speaking, the religious events or gatherings such as processions of the saints, Moriona's lantern rites and others had been passing through the streets where the hotel is located. The conservation of the 
Buak Hotel. The status of the structure is in good condition. It is in good condition through renovations and repainting. It is made up of concrete, but other parts inside the hotel are maintained wooden. The recent exterior of the structure is well painted with cream and blue colors. The integrity of the structure is altered, but it is still in the original site. Although the original wooden structure of the Buak Hotel was altered with a concrete structure, some parts is sustained with wooden material such as the second floor and the stairs. Yet, this structure is still in its original site for 54 years. Threats to the conservation of the structure of the hotel may include fire, natural disasters such as earthquake, termites, and other pests that could ruin the, the wooden parts of the structure. Rising of new hotels, vehicular accidents, and other road-related accidents can also be a threat to the structure. To conserve the decade-old hotel, it was renovated and altered with concrete materials that could withstand against some threats to the structure. Repairs were immediately done to damaged parts. It has been repainted to maintain its aesthetic value. Here are some list of significant tangible movable heritage that can be found within the premises of the hotel. First is a typewriter. It is uh, approximately 25 years old. And the material is composed of mainly plastic and steel. A rotary telephone, approximately 30 years old. Materials include polymer outer housing, plastic, metal, silicon on the circuit board, and magnetic materials on the speaker. Desk and chair. So the desk is desk and chair is approximately 50 years old. And made up of wood and steel handbar. And is believed to be located at the hotel since the hotel started. Another is a tapayan or, banga or big clay water jar, which is approximately 30 years old, which is made up of clay. The Filipiniana dress. This Filipiniana dress is uh, displayed in the lobby of the hotel. It is approximately 40 years old and the material is believed to be uh, composed of pineapple fiber. The, uh, the key informants of this uh, information about the Boa Hotel is Mr. Nelson. Mabuti, or also called Captain Bogi. He is an employee of the Buck Hotel for 47 years. Other references include the website of the Buck Hotel, which is www.buckhotel.com, and a, a research study conducted by a student, the Buck Hotel 50 Years in Service. That would be all for. I am Ivy Joy Agiflor from Group 2. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And to give us more information about movable heritage, may I call on Ms. Gladal Sadiwa from Group 3. Ohio, Minasan. Wadashua Maria Goloderu, Sadiwa Our group 
is assigned to present tangible, movable objects. Tangible, movable heritage includes paintings, sculptures, wall paintings, carving, photo, print works, and sketch. So here in Marinduque, Buak, officially the municipality of Buak, is a first-class municipality and capital of the province of Marinduque, Philippines. According to the 2015 census, it has a population of 54,730 people. So I'm going to present to you an artwork which is made by our local artist named Antonio Shena Monte Agudo. The title of this painting is Buak Cathedral Painting. Buak Cathedral Painting is made from pure acrylic painted in canvas. The dimensions of this landscape artwork is 73.66 cm in height and 76.2 cm in length. This painting was three years old. For the primary criteria, sorry, Aesthetic. Because of the cathedral's heritage that was built for more than 200 years and being a local artist, Mr. Antonio Shena Monteagudo painted this art artwork and currently preserved and displayed in his house. According to him, it is because of the cathedral's heritage. He made this as a subject to represent Marinduque being one of the island with many um, heritage to remember. Under social, it is used for house decoration and displayed for tourists who will visit their residence located at Barangay Santol, Boac Marinduque. There are many vloggers, visitors, tourists who already visited their house and interviewed him about his paintings. And for the comparative criteria, the provenance of this painting, Mr. Monteagudo repainted it from its first edition, which is made from watercolor on board and is 37 years old now. And the representativeness, it represents as the haven for the local Marinduqueño and looks like surrounded by the walls of Intramuros in Manila. It is rare because it is made by Marinduque's pride local artist, Mr. Monteagudo, and the subject, which is Buak Cathedral, became a harbor for the locals during a Moro attack in the 1800s and was the place where the Philippines revolutionary flag was placed in 1899. Currently, this Buak Cathedral is still used for mass and it is uh, preserved by the locals in Buak. Under interpret potential, it fosters talent of every local artist in representing Marinduki heritage. So, according to Mr. Monteagudo, being this Buak Cathedral as a subject makes him proud being a Marindukenyo. And for my reference, I personally asked Mr. Monteagudo for this and get this information for us to know about one of his famous artwork. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mom. Yes, yes ma but definitely not the least. To enlighten us with the intangible heritage, significant personalities, let us lend our eyes and ears to Mr. Noel P. Maa. Good morning po sa ating lahat and happy National Heritage Month to, our, uh, to everyone, especially to our guests who serve as validator for today's activity and to our professor, Dr. Randy Noblesa. So today, I'll be representing the group four and I will be presenting the intangible heritage of Buak under the category of oral traditions, expressions, including language. So to begin with, the name of this element is Santa Cruzan. So the background information of this Santa Cruzan song, uh, of this Santa Cruzan is under the category of a song. It's a song in the municipality of Pua. So uh, presented is the first part of the Santa Cruzan song. So this song is associated with 11 poems, which is appended in the last pages of this form. So geographical location and range of the element. Santa Cruzan is practiced and used as a song in Barangay Caganhao, Buak Marinduque, from 29th day of April up to 25th day of May every year. The said barangay is situated in the municipality of Buak Marinduque. Santa Cruzan song was first used in Barangay Tubos, Buak Marinduque, in connection with the celebration of Flores de Mayo. So this uh, Santa Cruzan song is uh, related to performing arts as it includes a dancing of the song and social practices, rituals, and festive events, uh, which the purpose of this song will be presented later on. So description of intangible cultural heritage. Do the summary of the element. So Santa Cruzan is a song which is used and performed by the residents, particularly by the youth of Barangay Caganhao. This song is associated with different poems and different activities. It was first practiced and used in Barangay Tugos, Boac Marinduque by Mrs. Vaselina Mindeja Mabuti. But when she met and got married to the love of her life, she moved to Barangay Caganhao, Boac Marinduque, and brought the Holy Cross, which is the center and main element in the Santa Cruzan song. The Holy Cross is being used in the Santa Cruzan for more than 70 years, and it was protected and preserved to ensure the continuity of the practice for more decades. Santa Cruzan was used every 29th day of April to 20th day of May in celebration of Flores de Mayo in honor of the Virgin Mary. It commenced in a religious, historical, cultural song, dance, and reading of poems. The song was sung by selected youth, both girls and boys, of the, of the said barangay. The song was first initiated in the church and later on be transferred to any house. The song begins with a reading of the rosary and the creation of the Holy Cross while reading poems and dancing. There is also an offering of flowers to the cross. So the Santa Cruzan song uh, as an activity uh, when it is performed in the Barangay Caganhao, so yung uh, cross po na ito, or na nagsisimbolize and nagsisenter ng Santa Cruzan song is magkakahiwalay pa po. So habang uh, kinakanta itong song na ito is unti-unting uh, binubuo yung cross at yung mga um, gamit na nakalagay po dito. So this song was used during the aforementioned period to wish or pray for rain because this period is usually a dry season and they believe that local farmers need more water to have plenty and rich harvest. Further, this song commemorates the finding of the true cross of, of Jesus Christ and ponders what Jesus Christ went through in the past. The song was first used and practiced by Miss Rosalina Mendeja Mabuti 
ki local resident of Barangay Kaganhaw, Buak Marinduque. She is a religious woman who believed that by singing the Santa Cruz song would help their farmers to have a fruitful and plentiful harvest. The song was also taught to his son, Mr. Wensi Mendeja Mabuti, and to other residents of the barangay to ensure the continuity of the practice. The song initiated by Ms. Rosalina Mendeja Mabuti a local resident of Barangay Tugos and transferred to Barangay Kaganhaw Marinduque after she got married. The song was taught to the youth of the barangay, including her children and grandchildren, and their annual participation made them familiarize with the song. So the following is the list of significant, tangible, movable heritage used in the Santa Cruz and song. So the first one is the Holy Cross. Um, this Holy Cross um, has been used in the Santa Cruz and Song for more than 50 years. And it is um, made of wood and papel di hapon. So it serves as the main element of the Santa Cruz and Song. The other one is the Peking Mahaba, uh, which, is, uh, which has been used for more than 50 years also. It is made also of wood and papel di hapon, and it served as an element of this song. The next one is the sibat. So it is made of wood and papel di hapon, and it served also as an element of the song. And before the Santa Cruz and song uh, begins, so gumagamit muna po sila ng rosary or nagdadasal sila, which this rosary uh, has been used for more than 50 years, and uh, pinipreserve po nila ito um, habang para mas mapagyabong pa po or magpatuloy ang pag-practice ng Santa Cruz and Song. And it is used while playing and singing the Santa Cruz and Song. So, list of flora or fauna used in the, in, the, in the element. So, number one is Rosal. Um, next is uh, Sampagita and Santan or Santa Ana. So, these three flowers um, was used in the Santa Cruz and Song and serve as confetti, which is usually thrown in singing the song. So, habang kinakanta po ng mga participants ng song, yung Santa Cruzan is uh, nagsasabog po sila ng um, iba't ibang klaseng bulaklak uh, in honor. So, kung sa other barangays po, ang pinapractice po nila during May is yung Torres de Mayo or yung pag-aaray lang po ng bulaklak. In barangay Kaganhaw, um, ito po ay uh, ginagamit yung Santa Cruz and Song at ito po ay associated with um, 11 different poems. So stories or narratives associated with the element. The Holy Cross serves as the center and main element of the Santa Cruz and Song. The song interprets how people look for the true cross of Christ. The Tiking Mahaba symbolizes the material used when Jesus Christ was crucified and put vinegar in his mouth. And Sibat or Spear symbolizes the material used when Jesus Christ was pierced in his side. So the rosary used for praying while singing the Santa Cruz and reading the succeeding poems. Further, the flowers such as Rosal, San Pagita, and Santa Ana or Santan were used as confetti which is thrown each after poem. So significance. The song has a spiritual and religious significance. The residents believe that by singing this song, they would be able to summon the rain for the benefits of local farmers of the barangay to have a fruitful and plentiful harvest. This song aims to honor Virgin Mary and commemorate or ponder the hardships of Jesus Christ. So condition or status of the practice. The song is continuously sung and practiced in Marangay Kaganhaw every 29th day of April and 25th day of May every year. However, in the years 2020 and 2021, the song was not participated by the youth because of the restrictions and protocols imposed by the national government in this time of pandemic. Amid this pandemic, the residents of the barangay who sang and practiced the Santa Cruzan were challenged because of the imposed health and safety protocols. Uh, but, um, pinag mga uh, nakatatanda or yung mga pwede pa pong 
lumabas sa kanilang bahay even in this time of pandemic. So measures and restrictions of safeguarding measures taken. So I check transmission, particularly through formal and non-formal education, which Ms. Rosalina Mendehema Buti uh, taught this uh, song to her um, son, Mr. Wensi Mendeha, and to her grandchildren. So there is also a documentation to ensure na mamimaintain yung uh, practice and meron silang uh, proper documentation po nito. And um, the song was transmitted and taught to the children of Mrs. Rosalina Mendeja Mabuti and other residents of the barangay. It was also documented by the residents every year and ensures preservations and protections of the copy of songs and all materials used in the Santa Cruzan. So the supporting documents are referenced for the Santa Cruzan song is uh, photographs of uh, the lyrics of the song and the 11 associated poems to po sa Santa Cruzan song. So ang aking pong key informants for the Santa Cruzan song is the uh, son of Mrs. Uh, Rosalina Mendeja, which is uh, Mr. Wensi Mendeja Mabuti, and her grand um, child, Miss uh, Georgine Mabutot, which are both uh, residents of Barangay Kevin Howe. Other, other uh, resources are yung Buak Maring Duque Cultural Heritage Mapping Project in 2012, initiated by the teachers of DepEdPo. So I'm your uh, mapper and um, profiler po, Mr. Inwes Lima. So ito po na sa last part po, ito po yung 11 poems associated with the Santa Cruz and songs. So yun lang po at maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much to the presenters for your fruitful insights. We, re we really learned a lot about the beautiful culture of our very own province. Before I introduce our special guest, let us be entertained first by an intermission number through video presentation entitled Pinig ng Pulo ni Kauski. Ako ay isang Siklab Society and Marinduke March by Jovan Magyaya. Ang kanyang katahimikang nagduwi 
Kasuyan ang aking kamusmusan Ang nagpulong sa aking kamalayang May agos ng mga along hiliksikan Sa lilim ng isang puno sa may daan Muling tututugin ang mga nakaraan At sabay na mag-aamitan sa himig ng karayaan Itong ating ginang bayang perlas ng dagat silangan May mga tinig mula rito May amang batis ng mga kwentong bayan Mga yugtong saksi ang lipunan sa mga pangyayaring pinipiping kasaysayan Ibong nagpabalik sa pugat na pinagmulan ang tulad kong minsay napalayo sa sariling bayan at muling maglalalakad sa mga lansangan Pagmasda ng inang kalikas Ang duya ng pangarap kong mabuhay At aking babaybayin Mga ilog at dalampasigan
It was really entertaining. Now, to share us their thoughts, let us lend our ears first to the administrator, content creator of Turi Hosenio's Facebook group, Mr. Region Armin Jones. His written message will be delivered to us by our very own Miss Joanne Perhis. Good morning po sa lahat. So, in behalf of Mr. Ray John Armendones, I am Joan Perhis from Group 1. And today, I will I am grateful to deliver his message. Sa ating mong minamahal at ginagalang na subject professor, Dr. Randy Pino Blesa, at sa inyong lahat, isang pagbati po ng maganda, malusog, ligtas, at makasaysayang umaga ng Sabado. Bago po ako magbigay ng ilang salaysay para sa gawain ngayong umaga, hayaan ninyo munang ipakilala ko ang aking sarili. Ako po si Ginoong Rayjan Reyes Florido Mendones na tubong poblasyon Torrijos, Marinduque. Ako po ang founder at admin ng Torrijos Senyos FB Group na naitataag noong 2015 na naglalayo na makatulong sa pag-unsad ng turismo ng aming bayan Torrijos. Mas lalong mapagyaman at mapahalagahan ang antigong kasaysayan, tradisyon at kulturang torehasenyo. Gayun din upang makapagbigay ng mga balitang may kinalaman sa aming bayan sa anumang panig ng mundo. Ikaapat na taon na po ngayon nang simulang magkainteras ako na mapag-aralan, magsaliksik at mangolekta ng mga bagay na may kaugnayan sa kasaysayan ng aming bayan, maging ng ating bansa. 
ginagawa ko po ito bilang pagbibigay ng halaga sa sariling kasaysayan ng aming bayan pagkat alam ko po na bibihira na lamang sa panahon ngayon ang nagkaka-interes sa kasaysayan. Sabi ko nga po ay kita ay hindi napagta kundi matanda. Noong wala pa pong pandemya, kapag lumuluwas po ako ng Maynila, lagi po ako naglalaan ng oras at panahon sa pamamasyal at pagpunta sa mga museums, simbahan at maging sa National Archives. Bilang matatangin pagbibigay ng halaga sa kasaysayan ng aming bayan at ng ating bansa. Nagkaroon po ako ng koleksyon ng mga sinaunang perang papel at coins ng ating bansa. Halos lahat po ay nakumpleto ko magmula sa panahon ng Espanyol, ng Amerikano, ng Hapon, hanggang sa Republika na ng Pilipinas na nagmula sa ilan naming mga kababayan at maging sa mga kaibigan ko na kapwa mga kultor. Bilang pagpapahalaga naman po sa tradisyon at kultura ng aming bayan, bumibili po ako ng dalawang pares ng manika, isang babae at lalaki, at pinatiyaan mo ito ng mga kasutan na naglalarawan ng bargonya o native dance at abukay, folk song na, nag, na ipinagmamalaking likhang singing mula sa aming bayan. Bilang pakikibahagi po sa aming mga sketch artist at upang maisalarawan naman ang mga sinaunang gusali na naitayo at kilalang personalidad noon sa aming bayan, kanila pong iginuhit ang mga sinaunang gusali tulad ng munisipyo, simbahan, kumbento o altar, paaralan, makasaysayong puok, maging ang local heroes ng aming bayan. Meron din po akong pinagawang painting na tunay na naglalarawan patungkol sa kasaysayan, tradisyon at kultura ng aming bayan. Ang lahat ng ito ay kasalukuyang naka-exhibit sa loob ng aming kainan na naging pambukan na ng mga koleksyon at likhang sini. Mula po na ma-exhibit ang mga ito sa aming kainan, marami na po ang nagpupunta upang maging reference sa kanilang mga research at thesis. Hindi man po ako pinalad na maging membro ng cultural mapping sa aming bayan, marahil ay ito na po yung tamang panahon at pagkakataon upang maibahagi ko sa inyo ang ilang kaalamang pangkasaysayan na bahagi ng patuloy na isinasagawang cultural mapping sa ating probinsya. Una, maliban po sa tanyar ng kasaysayang labanan sa pulang lupa, ay meron din po sa Meron din po na nangyaring tatlong labanan pa sa barangay ng Malibago noong panahon ng Amerikano. Noong panahon naman ng Hapon ay may nangyaring sagupaan din sa barangay Buangan at ito ay tinawag nilang The Battle of Mabukda. Buhay pa po ang nagpapatunay nito na si Binibining C. M. Rio Florido na siya din nagbigay ng musika sa ino ng bayan ng Torejos na ngayon ay siyang napotatlong edad na. Ikalawa, ang tinatawag na baterya sa Milaor sa barangay Poblasyon ay metaturing din na isang makasaysayang puok dahil dito bumaba at umakyat upang magtungo sa munisipyo ng Torejos noon ang yumao at dating presidente ng Pilipinas na si Manuel L. Quezon. Pangatlo, sa kasalukuyan meron pa rin na mga sinaunang bahay na hanggang ngayon ay nakatayo pa din sa aming bayan na bahagi ng atigong kasaysayan. Pangapat, ay ilan din po ng mga antigong imahen pang porsisyon mula sa iba't ibang pamilya at ang ilan ay pag-aari ng simbahan. Ikalima, marami pa po ako nakikita mga sinaunang gamit tuwing papasok at makikituloy sa tahanan ng ilang mga kakilala ko. Bilang bahagi at naging bunga ng aking pananaliksik para sa aking ginagawang aklat pang kasaysayan ng aming bayan, hayaan ninyo na aking maibahagi ngayon ang isa sa aking mga akda at ito ay ang kasaysayan bilang paglalarawan sa bayan ng Torejos noong unang panahon. Sinasabi ng ibang kasulatang pangkasaysayan noong wala pa itong sariling kasarinlan at ito ay nasasakop pa ng Santa Cruz din na po ang mga lugar na ito ay napapaligiran ng malalaki at matitibay na pulong kahoy at pinamamahayana ng mga ligaw na iba't ibang uri ng mga bulaklak, halaman at hayop, maamong man o mabangis. Ang lugar na ito ay tinatawag at pinangalan na hinalong mula sa ngalan ng puno ng salamagi, elefante at pero. Ang mga kabundukan, bulubundukin at maging kapatagan ay sagana sa pinagkukunang yaman sapagkat mayaman ito sa bunga kahoy. Mga isdang naglipa na sa mga ilog at baybaying dagat. 
Ang iyong pagtatanim, pangingisda, papagroso, pangangaso, paghahabi at pangangalakal ang unang ikinabubuhay ng mga taong unang nanirahan dito. Maliban dito, ang mga sumusunod ay ilan din sa aking mga nilikha tulad ng Sino nga ni Baga si Don Gavino Ribamonte? Ang kasaysayan tungkol sa simbahan ng parokya at kwento ng isang matandang babae. Sa kabuuan, binabati ko ang lahat dahil sa magandang adikain ng subject na foreign language to true cultural mapping led by Dr. Noblesa upang maipakilala ang mayamang kultura, mga pamana ng ating nalawigan, particular sa bayan ng Buwak at Torrejos, bilang pagkakasinalan at tagumpay ng ating kasaysayan. Bilang pagkatapos po ng aking salaysay, nais ko po magpasalamat sa inyong lahat, lalo tigit kay Dr. Randy P. Noblesa at maging kay Ma'am John Percy sa pagbibigay ng pagkakataon at iwala na maging inyong guest validator para sa CIMAP Forms presentation ngayong umaga. Naway marami pa po kayong makuha at mga nalamang pang kasaysayan mula sa aking mga isinulat na salaysay na ang tanging hangad ay maibahagi upang nang sa gayon ay mas lalo pa nating mabigyan ng kahalagahan ang sarili nating kasaysayan. Pagpalain po tayo lahat ng Diyos. Mula po kay Ginoong Raydan Reyes Lorido Mendonas, founder and content creator of the Rio Senios FB Group. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Ms. Joanne Perez. And uh, thank you very much as well, Mr. Rajan Armin Jones. Our next guest to share his thought is a secondary school teacher one from Tapuyan National High School. He is currently taking up graduate diploma in cultural education at the Marinduca State College and Master of Arts in Social Science at the National Teachers College. Let us all welcome Mr. Jeremel M. Laderas. Yo, okay na po ang aking sound. Uh, isa pong mapagmula, mapagpalaya, makasaysayan at mapagpalang umaga at buwan ng pamana sa lahat. Uh, nais ko po muna bago po ako magbigay ng ilang mga, ano po, sa mga kaliwanagan, uh, nais ko po muna magpasalamat kay Ma'am Ivy Joy Aguiflor na siya po nag sa akin para sa ganitong uh, aktividad. Uh, parang kahapon po yata o Webes niya o kinontak dahil yung mga conflict po sa mga inibitahan niya. Hindi naman po ako nagdalawang isip na tumanggi sa kanya sapagkat hindi naman po ako maramot pagdating sa uh, mga kaalaman patungkol sa kultura at tradisyon ng mga rinig. Uh, isa rin po, agad din po kay Dr. Robles ha? na amin po uh, na lagi din po akong tawagin sa mga gawain pang kultura uh, lagi po niya akong hinihiram sa DepEd uh, para po makasama sa mga ilang gawain na may kinalaman sa kultura sa graduate diploma in cultural education na uh, ngayon po ay level 2 na kami this coming sir para kailan nga po yun sir sa parang September October po at level 2 at nawa po ay eh, makagraduate po kami ng maayos ay September to December I'm in GDC so kami po ay eh, ano batch 2 dito sa Marinduque uh, gusto po po pasalamatan yung ating mga Uh, na lahat kanina ng kanilang mga papel. Tinitinong ko po kanina yung mga participants na kakahiya kasi po yung iba pala dito sa mga uh, participants, yung mga aklase ko nung ano, college, yung iba po eh, yung mga seniors ko pa. Ganun din po especially sa mga kasama ko sa left end. Hello po, good morning. Uh, tayo po yung nagkita dito sa ating uh, Google Meet. Uh, gusto ko pong bigyan din ang uh, pagbati yung mga nag-report kanina. Alam ko kayo yung uh, kumbaga the best sa grupo. Kaya kayo, kaya kayo po yung nag-present uh, na yung papers. Uh, yun po, napakaganda, napakaayos, napakalinis ng inyong 
magsasagawa ng inyong cultural mapping. Actually po, napakarami na rin po uh, sumaguli sa akin <laughs> sa mga cultural mapping na yan at hindi din naman po ako ng pwede akong isip uh, maibahagi yung aking kaalaman. So, mabit ko kanina, ako po ay currently uh, GDC student at ngayon po eh, nasisiwala pa, ling, para, pa, pa rin lang po sa master's ko sa National Teachers College. At kalapos lang po na aming semestre, uh, social science po. Okay po. Uh, yung po kanina, ano, napakita sa atin yung natural heritage. Uh, at dali po, uh, may bahay ko lang sa natural heritage po may tatlong categories. Yung flora and fauna, yung mga kahayupan ng kahalamanan din sa, uh, sa atin. Ikalawa po yung ecosystems. Actually po, balik tayo sa flora and fauna. Marami tayong mga endemic species dito uh, pagdating sa mga ibon at sa mga halaman. Ecosystems, marami din po tayo dito. Artificial, parang wala naman po artificial. Pero alam ko po yung dating Elefante Island ay zoo. A mini zoo. Terrestrial, uh, kung kayo may pamilyar, dyan sa Central Marinduque, yung Marinduque Wild Sanctuary. Freshwater, yung po nasa Torijos, yung naampiyas uh, watershed natin dyan na uh, malaki ang pondo para mapangalagaan. Meron din tayong brackish ecosystem, yung, yung oak mangrove and time site, tsaka yung piga, Santa Cruz. And sa marine naman po, parte ang Marinduque ng Verde Island Passage, yung center of the center of uh, marine biodiversity sa mundo. Geologic pictures, ang ating sikat-sikat na Mount Balindi, ang ating palang mountain ranges, at ang tumagabok si Buyang Highlands, at yung ilang ating man-made lakes dyan sa Mugpog at Santa Cruz. May pakita rin po kanya ni Built Heritage uh, na na ilahad po yung napakahalagang uh, bahagi hindi ng pananang Dock Hotel sa kasaysayan ng, uh, ng Marinduque. Movable Heritage. Uh, maibahagi ko po ano. Sa Marinduque, iisa lang po ang ating kinikilalang Movable Heritage. Sa labing apat na Movable Heritage sa Pilipinas, ito po yung Marinduque Celadon Jar. Yung pong banga. Ang um, pagkakalam ko po, yung replica ay nasa Marinduque Museum at yung original ay nasa may nila. So, uh, intangible cultural heritage na ipakita rin po kanina ano, yung Santa Cruz. And so ako po, uh, honestly, ngayon ko lang nalaman uh, na may ganun pala sa Takrus and Song dito sa buwak. Nagabok naman ako, hindi ko alam na may ganun po. Uh, maibahay ko rin lang po, ano, isa rin po sa bahagi ng ating buhay na pagdating sa nal, uh, sa tao dito. Pagdating sa Ibinhay kaya ni Sir, ano, yung sa language, ano po, yung isa sa mga folk jokes sa atin, yung Orion Dungi, may tayo sa Binde, pinabol ng pare, takbo pa uwi. Tatak natin yan, isa sa ating mga uh, intangible languages natin. Okay. Uh, kaya ako po pinaunlakan itong ganitong aktividad dahil hindi naman po sa pagbubukat ng sariling bangko, ano po, naka-experience na rin po kasi ako magpahagi sa ilang mga uh, gawain. Uh, Iimitahan din po ako ni Sir Robles sa magpahagi sa uh, sa MSC noon, sa tertulyang uh, pangwika maring o paano. Uh, next po may ibahagi yung aking undergrad grade thesis ay tungkol sa pinagkulan at variasyon ng Marindo Kanon Tagalog. Tayo po ay napakaliit. Isa lang ang sinasalitang wika ng Tagalog. Pero sa ilalim po nun, kung ilan yung bayan natin, ganun din po yung bilang ng variasyon ng ating sinasalita. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo po, iba-iba ang ating tono dito sa Marindo. Iba ang tono ng po sa ibang bayan. Iba yung mga salita. Para may mga salita tayo hindi maintindihan no sa iba't ibang mga uh, bayan. Ah, uh, dito dito lang po nakaraang uh, February, uh, Desyembre ano po? Ako ay nagbahagi din in partnership po with Marinduque State College na imbitahan ako ni Dr. Leigh Garcia Halos at ng tourism office sa Buwak na magbahagi ng aking papel yung po yung pamulaan ng mga lansangan sa Buwak. So dito po, uh, ng cultural mapping din po ako mag-isa. Uh, akin po pinag-aralan yung mga lansangan sa Buwak, yung, uh, yung uh, uh, 
tawag dito, kakalagahan ko pang kasaysayan uh, ng mga kansada dito sa poblasyon ng Buwak. At nawa po, sa sunod ay yung sa ibang bayan naman ang masimulan uh, ko. At ngayon po ay meron ako ongoing na uh, researches uh, hindi pa po siya masyadong naiintindi uh, pero yung dalawa po yun, yung pag-usbo, pag-ulad at pag ng protestantismo sa Marindu. Eh, ako po kasi ay kabilang sa pananampalatayang evangelical protestant. So malaki din po ang, ang, ang naging kamanay ng protestantismo sa, uh, sa buhay kristyano din sa Marindu. Eh. So ito po ay sinisimulan ko. Ikalawa po yung pagwawas ko sa mga umiiral na toponimo sa buhak. Ano po, uh, Marami po kasi uh, pagkakamali sa paglalahad o sa kung paano nagsimula ang mga pangalan ng ating mga parangay, ng ating mga bayan. Ano po, napakaraming dapat itama kasi mahalaga mga itama para hindi malito, hindi mamali ang sino man, lalo, lalo na yung mga marito tayo. Ano po, uh, ito po yung naisong ibahagi sa lahat. Gusto ko pong ibahagi sa inyo yung sinabi ni dating Pangulong Benigno Aquino. Hindi po ako dilawan, ha? Gusto ko lang pong ibahagi yung kanyang sinabi sa English. Hindi ko na pong sinabi. As sabi niya dito, Learn English and connect to the world. Learn Philippine well and connect to the country. And retain your dialect and connect with your heritage. Sa panahon ko ngayon, hindi, hindi okay o... Uh, uh, hindi lang basta hindi okay yung uh, bilingual lang na ang alam lang natin ay uh, Filipino at mag-trilingual po tayo especially yung pagpapakalaga natin sa ating dialecto kung marito paano Tagalog yes po yung polyglotism ano Uh, mahalaga na trilingual tayo o polyglot tayo especially sa ating dialecto Marindokanon. Bakit po? O, o Marindokenyo, Tagalog. Kasi ngayon po, hindi pa accepted ang terminology yung Marindokanon dahil wala pa po tayong in general circulation ng salitang Marindokanon, paano nagsimula ang Marindokanon. So, gawin din natin masip Marindokenyo. Uh, mahalaga na ma- uh, alagaan natin yung ating marinto Kenyo na pag uh, wika o dialecto para makakonekta tayo makaugay sa ating pam- mga pamana. Ayan, marin- marinto Kenyo. Maging henyo tayo sa sarili nating dialecto, maging henyo tayo sa sarili nating pamana. Kaya ito yung pang- pinamana sa atin dahil tayo yung mga ngalaga. Ah... Uh, Bago natin mapag-aralan, ano kaya sa elementary meron tayo tinatawag na mother tongue? Ano uh, ito kasi ang pundasyon ng paligi para maunawaan natin yung uh, basics or rudiments ng ayan, MPB, MLP sa elementary. Ano po. Nakalulungkot lang ano, na tinanggal ang DepEd ang Philippine history sa high school. Uh, kaya isa po ako sa mga... Uh, Uh, dito sa mga mem- membro po ano nung mga nagpe-petition na ibalik ang Philippine history sa high school kasi uh, mahalaga mapagtutunan ng masisinan at malalimang pag-aaral ang Philippine history. Ika naman po, bilang mga guru, uh, kapag alam natin ang ating lokal na pamana, ibig sabihin po, ah, uh, tayo ay may kapangyarihan sa kontekstualisasyon, lokalisasyon, at indehinisasyon ng ating mga uh, paksang aralin. Alam niyo po kasi, uh, ang ating sa DepEd, sa K-12, layo rin po ng K-12 na ma-contextualize ang bawat aralin. At mahalagang malaman natin ang ating uh, uh, pamana para magkaroon tayo ng pag-uugnay sa ating mga paksang aralin sa pagdating sa klase. Bakit po? Sasabihin, maaaring sabihin niyo paano ko ma-i-contextualize ang 
ang lokal o mga pamana ang mga cultural icons sa matematika, sa agham, sa mape, sa TLE. Pwedeng-pwede po. Ano? Uh, isa yan sa mga sa DepEd, isa yan sa mga inoobserbahan sa atin. Ano? Uh, ngayon, sa ating pandemic edition, katama pa rin yan, yung ating contextualization. Uh, kapag alam natin ang ating mga pamana, ito ay magiging isang data natin sa loob na, sa loob ng tabas sa ating mga silitaran. Uh, ikatlo, bilang mga marito kayo nyo, malaki ang ating kapanin para sa preservasyon at pag-iingat ng ating pamana. Bakit ko po nasabi? Napansin ko po habang sa aking paglaki ano, bilang isang batang marindokenyo at true-blooded marindokenyo, uh, halimbawa, uh, sitasyon po sa kabayanan ng buwak, maririnig mo ang mga tao wala nang puntong marindokenyo. Lahat ay tunog may nila, tunog lungsod ang kanilang mga punto. Uh, may kita mo sa mga karatula na purong Tagalog. Halimbawa, uh, dito magtapo ng basura. Bakit hindi natin isulong na dito atapon ang iyong basura? Gusto ko po ibahagi sa inyo sa Gatan Central School, gano'n ang kanilang best practice. Lahat ng karatula, sightages, nasa Marinoka, Marinokenyo, Tagalog. At mahalaga na masanay tayo sa ganitong mga uh, kasanayan upang hindi makalitaan, hindi maisang tabi yung kahalagahan ng pamana sa ating kultura, sa ating edukasyon, sa ating uh, 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 pang-araw-araw na buhay. Ikaapat po, ang pandemya sa, kasuku- sa kasalukuyan ay parehong biyaya at hamon sa preservasyon ng ating mga pamana. Bakit ko po nasabing biyaya? Dahil personally ako po, mas lumawak at mas sumabang po yung aking oras sa pananaliksik ko po sa mga pamanang meron tayo dito sa Marine Buke. Uh, Nakatuyan ko na po kasi na magkolekta, mangalap, magtala ng mga bagong kaalaman tungkol sa pamana natin. Bilang isang aralin palipunan, uh, medyo isang turo po sa aralin palipunan sa Pilipino sa aming paaralan, nagagamit ko po ito pag po, nagkakaroon, pag po ako nang contextualize ng aking mga uh, aralin. Uh, nakatuwa po na ang mga bata uh, uh, sa kasunukuyan ay natututo. Kasi nakalungkot na ang mga bata sa kasunukuyan wala alam sa ating pamana, sa ating mga cultural icons, sa ating mga uh, cultural expressions na yan. Uh, mahalaga ang cultural mapping, huli po. Mahalaga ang cultural mapping sa pagpapalago sa ating kaalaman, sa ating sariling kultura. Doon po natin marirealize, uh, last year po, nag-cultural mapping kami sa, amin, sa GDC namin. Marami kaming natuklasan, marami kaming nalaman, uh, maraming kaliwanagan sa, dahil laging instrumento po ang cultural mapping sa pagwawasto, sa pagtatama, at sa pagdaragtag kalaman doon sa ating mga umiiral, umiiral na kaalaman sa tungkol sa ating pamanang kultura. Uh, kasaysayan, ating isa lahat na papayaman po yung mga existing na records. Uh, maibahagi ko po ano, kung ako yung gumagawa ng aking undergraduate thesis, binisita ko po lahat ng uh, municipal tourism and information offices. At nakakalungkot na maging sila, walang tala. At sila mismo ang nagsabi sa akin na pag natapos mo po yan, bigyan mo kami ng kopya. Uh, uh, nakakalungkot na nakakalungkot in the case na wala pa tayong ganap, wala pa tayong tapos, wala pa tayong uh, umiiral, wala pa tayong uh, certain na mga koleksyon o tala tungkol sa ating mga pamana. At nakakatuwa naman na siguro um, isa ako sa mga kasangkapan para mapunan yung ganong kakulangan. At luckily po, uh, may mga 
projects po in partnership with LGU Lito sa Buak na imitahan po tayo. Uh, may mga papers na rin po ako doon. Uh, Nakakatuma po na available po kung siyo masahin yung active from study. Available po siya sa Municipal Tourism and Information Library dito sa Kakasarian. So, yun po, uh, para po sa pinakahuling aking naisibahagi ay huwag po tayo maging petics pagdating sa kultura at sa pamana. Uh, mawawala, pag hindi natin yan, uh, pag hindi tayo magkukulungan, pag hindi tayo aaksyon sa para pangalagaan at ingatan itong mga pamanang ito, hindi po po ito mamamatay at tayo rin ang mahihirapan mangalap. Ano, kaya habang may habang buhay pa tayo, maging ama na rin tayo sa galing tumagawain may kinalaman sa kultura at pamana, especially dito sa atin sa Lalawika. So yun lamang po. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Wishing you all good health. Stay safe. At wish you all na mabuting kalusugan ng uh, karunungan sa lahat. So, magandang tangali po sa bawat isa. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Mr. Ladaran. And thank you very much to our guests for sharing their thoughts. As a, as a token of our appreciation for your time and valuable contribution, may I present to you the Certificate of Appreciation. Let me read the citation. Republic of the Philippines. Marine Duque State College, School of Graduate Studies and Professional Education, Tanta Buak Marine Duque. Certificate of Appreciation is given to Mr. Jeremel M. Laderas and Mr. Rajan Armin Jones for his invaluable contribution as a member of the panel of reactors in SEMA forms. Presentation, Jishu to Chizu with the team, Victory and Humanity, Upholding Filipino Heritage and, ident uh, and Identity as a Celebration of National Heritage Month 2021. Given this 22nd day of May 2021 at Marinduque State College, Tanza Buak Marinduque, time Signed, Dr. Julieta Q. Navos, Dean S. Jeff, and Dr. Randy T. Noblesa, MSC Centro ng Wika at Kultura Director. Ladies and gentlemen, may I thank you for your active participation in this event. I hope you enjoy this program. Have a nice day ahead. God bless everyone. Stay safe. Cool and fresh. Um, I request everyone to please turn on their cameras for the picture taking. <laughs> In the picture. Are we all set up for the picture taking? Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Nag a picture ka kay din. Nag a picture ka kasali ka dyan. Nag a picture.
picture na ko na din lahat. Sino nag picture nito? Sino ba na-enjoy sa picture taking? Again, reminding everyone to please turn on their camera for the picture taking. This is for the documentation po. <clears throat> okay, thank you and have a good lunch. So to Sir Manaog, uh, please get well soon and the rest of the graduate students bless you and enjoy the rest of the weekend. So please uh, submit the proceedings on or before Monday, May 24th. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, po. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, po. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you.